Dave Gibbons, who previously worked on popular weekly comic 2000 AD, tried and failed to make a Watchmen game, but he still had the computer bug and has now joined up forces with Revolution Software, whose previous software credits include the highly acclaimed Lure of the Temptress, to work on this absolute classic, Beneath a Steel Sky. Right at the start of the adventure, you find that Foster has escaped from the wreck of the helicopter in which he was kidnapped and must ensure that he eludes security in order to discover his past and his destiny. His fate is in your hands, as he talks to people and explores the area around him in an attempt to discover why he was brought to the city. What follows is a series of puzzles, clues and snatched conversations which convince you that not only is the world which you have so reluctantly entered come completely off its hinges, but that you, in some way, are the key to it all. Hidden in one of the pockets of your rather snazzy Ministry Stealth coat is a circuit board which holds the personality and brain of your lifetime companion called Joey, a sarcastic robot sidekick. Joey lost his robot shell in the helicopter crash, but luckily you had enough presence of mind to take his controlling board. Once you find a shell for him, you can get him on his feet, tracks, wheels, whatever, and then get him to help you out with some of the trickier puzzles in the game. Watch out though, as Joey has a very strong personality of his own, which will conflict with yours occasionally. Moving Foster around a screen can get annoying if Joey gets in your way, and the manner in which characters have to jostle for position when you want to talk to them can get aggravating. The action is set over four different levels. Factory, City, Park and Underworld, each with its own peculiar set of problems. Your first task is to escape the cordon of security forces which surrounds the helicopter crash site. You do this by exploring the bleak industrial sector, filled with mysterious pieces of machinery, computer terminals, and characters like the obese and treacherous supervisor, Lam, who gladly sacrifices others' lives in pursuit of his own career. The city level also has its fair share of unsavoury characters. There is Dr. Burke, the plastic surgeon, who is quite happy to accept your testicles as down payment on a brain implant and Billy Anker, the insurance salesman with a hidden agenda. The city level is also where you find clues to Lamb's past and his unenviable collection of pussy videos. Once you figure out how to get there, the park section also has its surprises. Mrs. Pianot, the gardener, and the owner of the St. James's nightclub all have skeletons in their respective closets. And, when you reach the underworld level, you know you are on the verge of discovering something major, with giant spiders and replicants intent on spoiling your chances of success. Beneath the Steel Sky is an exceptional game. Right from the beginning, you know you are playing something a bit special. The whole thing absolutely reeks atmosphere, from comic book artist David Gibbons' Blade Runner-ish backgrounds to the spot-on sound effects. Beneath the Steel Sky is a game of substance. Programmers Revolution Software have gone out of their way to ensure the game plays as logically as possible, so you never get frustratingly stuck on any of the many puzzles for too long. You quickly learn that the various keys and keyholes are red herrings, and even the most obscure test of your abilities as an adventure gamer can be mastered with a little bit of lateral thinking. Still, no game is perfect, right? And Beneath a Steel Sky is no exception. If you own an Amiga Mini, the game is a lot easier on your stress levels, as for when I first played this back as a kid, the disc swapping soon became too frustrating. I think if it wasn't for the quality of the game itself, I would have just given up. Mind you, I had the same issue with disc swapping on Monkey Island 2, and that didn't put me off either. In many games, no matter how many times you perform an action or ask a question, the result is always the same. This is quite obviously stupid. I mean, if some stranger came up to you and asked, where is the forest, 12 times, would you say, it is over the hill there, 
an equal number of times. Of course you wouldn't. You would probably want to punch him after the first five. Another annoying factor is that it's incredibly easy to die. If you stick Foster in the wrong place at the wrong time and he takes a fatal tumble, your only resort is to restore from your last save game position. You never found Guybrush Threepwood carrying on like that. These are minor glitches in an otherwise thoroughly enjoyable game. The controls are well set up. Left click tells you about an object or person. Right click performs an action and you only use the icons or menu bars to select an object from your inventory. The graphics in the game are simply stunning. There is no other way to describe them. Hand-painted backdrops, scanned in and retouched, stop it from looking like a run-of-the-mill adventure. And the use of exceptional detail make the smallest, dullest rooms interesting to search. Small ceiling fans rotate and, in the far distance, cars travel along the highways. Every character has a whole range of moves and expressions which, along with the personality generated through conversation, gives them depth and makes them all the more believable. Beneath the Steel Sky is very slick and extremely well put together. It is one of the most enjoyable Amiga graphic adventures and can definitely sit alongside the Monkey Island boxes on my game shelf. But as a footnote to the plot, this is not some half-baked, you-must-find-the-golden-amulet scenario. It is a long story of discovery, where the people you meet are part of the story rather than helpful pointers to the end. Some people are out to get you, and you can get killed. Some help you, and others get rubbed out along the way. You progress through the real world and cyberspace to an ending that is actually quite a surprise. If you are going to play this game, and I would highly recommend that you do, treat it like a movie. Stay away from game solutions as you would avoid the plot of a film. It might take you longer to do it yourself, but finishing it will be all the sweeter, and it's a genuinely enjoyable experience. Simply one of the best adventures ever released on the Amiga. What did you think? Please hit the like button and let me know in the comment section. If you're enjoying reminiscing with me on these classic Commodore titles, then please consider subscribing to the channel, where I go through some awesome nostalgic games that will hopefully bring back some fantastic memories from a time when we first discovered them back in the day. There's plenty more on the channel to discover, and also some more suggested at the end credits. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Until then, hey guys, bye for now. Some rock and roll. Hey guys, play... I want to hear some Joy Division! Giving a huge super shout out and thanks to my latest Patreons for helping to support the channel. It means so much to me that you're willing to back what I do. Stay retro.